Hello and welcome to Edgeless Rock, a channel for megalithic fans with megalithic lens. In my previous video, I shared about East and West Berets and Mabons, which I think is simply just a temple with an oversized moat. Today, we are going to look at a monument not known to many people simply because it is underpromoted and underrated. There are several structures in Cambodia which we call berets because it contains a huge volume of rainwater. The construction of Jayatataka Bare is credited to King Jayavarman VII. Cambodia is a country everyone must visit once in their lifetime, but sadly, most people can barely draw Cambodia map on a world map. At the tip of the pin is a yellow dot. This is where you can find Jayatataka Bare. It has been there for a thousand years, waiting for you to visit and be amazed with what Cambodia has to offer. According to archaeologists, this is a beret just like West Beret and East Beret, which I mentioned in my previous video. But there is a slight difference, because East and West Berets are called reservoir for agriculture. On the other hand, Jaya Tataka Bare is a religious water tank for Priyakan Temple located just beside the Bare. Priyakan Temple is a large megalithic temple with a large moon, so I'm not sure why Angkorians need a water tank so many times bigger than a big temple. To me, Jaya Tataka looks like a temple with a moon, just like Angkor Wat and Angkor Thom. Jaya Tataka Bare is the third largest water containment structure in Cambodia and it is not a small task. It is 3.5 kilometers long and 900 meters wide. If you can walk around this bare every morning, it will be an incredible 8.8 .8 kilometers exercise. You can find the measurements for the square island is 350 meters. But Google Maps shows it is 390 meters long and 340 meters wide. Based on the measurements, you can see that total area is approximately 3.15 million square meters and the island temple is approximately 132,600 square meters. That means the moat area is approximately 3 million square meters. I cannot find the info on the depths given for this beret, but if it is 4 meters deep just like East and West beret, then the volume of this water tank is approximately 12 million cubic meters. This would have been a Herculean task to ancient Cambodians with hoes and shovels. A typical ancient temple comes with a moat with lots of land and a magnificent temple in the middle. I don't think you can call Jaya Tataka Bare a water tank just because the moat is disproportionately large. To make the matter more creative, it becomes harder to see it as a moat when it is a rectangle. Our eyes tend to deceive us when things are not what we used to see. A penguin might look like a baby walrus next to a walrus, but a penguin is a bird. To put into perspective, archaeologists say ancient Cambodians dug out approximately 29 million square meters of land area. East and West Berets are reservoirs for agriculture, and Jaya Tataka Bare is a religious water tank for Priyakan Temple. These digging activities at such a grand scale could not have escaped documented history. Jaya Tataka Bare has a temple called Nik Kon. Nik in Khmer language means dragon. The root word is from Sanskrit based Naga. Dragon is a mythical creature with the body of a snake. Nik Pon can be translated as entwined serpents. So you can imagine, if this is in China, it would have been called Dragon Temple. I would see this as entwined serpent temple in English. 
Intertwined Serpent is an interesting subject with lots of things to read. You can write a book just on these two slithering creatures alone. They are in Naga and Nagini of Indian mythology. They are in Sumerian mythology as Mushusu. They are in Chinese creation mythology as Fuxi and Nuwa. But today, I'm going to share about the serpents with regards to health both physically and spiritually. There is something very unique about this symbol and it is hidden in ancient knowledge which can be as far as 4,000 years ago if you take into account the Indian, Chinese and Sumerian histories. Kundalini is a meditation that focuses on awakening the dormant energy from within. It takes the mind to focus and brings the body to the next level of existence. I see it as a connection between physical world and spiritual world through the mental world. If you are healthy spiritually and mentally, then you will be healthy physically. The entwined nagas must have some kind of symbolic meaning for health. It is like a knowledge where we can tap the positive energy from the universe to make our body healthy. It has something to do with the serpents. The seven-headed nagas certainly looks like wings from afar. It looks like caduceus, the iconic symbol for medicine. Medicine has something to do with health. Is the naga and nagini symbol the source of inspiration for the caduceus symbol? This icon is very popular today and is a symbol for pharmacy optometry, chiropractic, first aid, and many more. Is that a coincidence or there is a knowledge handed down from the unknown ancient cultures millennia ago to medieval times, but the knowledge left by the unknown ancient builders were lost. However, the icon survived through the medieval times until today. So what has two Nagas or Caduceus got to do with Jayatataka Bare? From what I'm seeing, the entire 3.5 km long Bare, which is a colossal water containment structure, comes down to this mysterious megalithic monument in the middle of the Bare. The center of the rectangular island in the middle has a circular platform this circular platform is not a creative design for competition. It has a nicely rounded and dressed stones. It has five step platform above that. The first level of the rounded step is actually two nagas. They have tails facing west and the heads are facing east. The rounded stones at bottom level is actually two nagas. The entwined tails are as if iconography of Naga and Nagini or Caduceus in medical symbology. But these two Nagas are Nanda and Upananda. They are in Indian mythology where in the Buddhist cosmology, there is a lake called Anavatapta which is in the center of the world. This is a beautiful ancient structure with two Nagas and intertwined tails. However, they are not entwined at the head. They are two seven-headed serpents facing a horse. The ancient Cambodians came here not just to take a bath but to cure illnesses. It is said to have the magical ability to heal people from diseases. The ancient Angkorians did not look at this as a temple but rather a superstructure that can cure the sick. It is a structure to make a person healthy again. That is why it is called a hospital. According to archaeologists, King Jayavarman VII constructed this as a hospital for the sick. Where did he get the knowledge for this magical pool? To contain the water, Nippon Temple Pond is about 63 meters square from wall to wall on the inside. The main shrine itself is about 19 meters in diameter based on Google Earth. It varies from other sources based on where is the starting point. But it is not the only pond. 
There are four other pawns on four cardinal points. These smaller square pawns are about 22 meters from wall to wall on the inside based on Google Earth. The central pool provided water to the four other peripheral pools through the beautiful stone spouts. You can find them in the pavilions on the axis of the pools. They come in the shape of a head of a horse, a lion, an elephant, and a human. I can find from the internet that it is representing the four great animals, but human is not an animal, so I'm not sure how that happened. It is said that people will go to different pools for different ailments. However, if you are not sick, you still can jump in the pool because it is believed to have the ability to rejuvenate your body. For those who are healthy, it will be just a relaxing spa that helps improve the mind and body. From what I'm reading, it sounds like it has therapeutic effect. So what we have here is a medical pool for the sick, which is also a therapeutic pool for the healthy. That is why it is called a hospital in the ancient Angkorian world where King Jayavarman VII is said to construct this as a hospital. We are basically looking at an advanced knowledge not available to us today, but yet very ancient in architecture and culture. There is quite a bit to cover for this beret. I will end here for now and continue in part 2 focusing more on the idea of health that relates to the idea of Jaya Tataka as medicinal lake. This is Bernie Ong signing out and have a wonderful day. Lei hai.